This is one of the most exciting bulletins. Signs are flashing in the heavens as warnings of World War III appear. Daniel referred to a he-goat crossing the face of the earth without touching it. Armies today are carried by ship, aircraft and transporters into battle. Rarely, if ever, marching great distances into battle, Alexander the Great's armies marched on their feet great distances to battle. That is a huge difference today. Incidentally, the he-goat has a prominent horn, or a unicorn, which of course is the sign of the two tribes of Israel doing this work. That's Ephraim and Vanessa. Hi, I'm Barry J. Thornton. I am very disturbed by what I am seeing. It is clear that the events taking place today in the Near East were long prophesied in Daniel, Ezekiel, Revelation, Matthew 24, Luke 21, to mention but a few references that are spiritual in nature. There is a huge naval and military build-up in the Eastern Med and the Gulf. Massive naval forces including the Russians, French, German, Turkish, Syrian, Chinese, Iranian, Israeli, British, American forces have numerous naval vessels bristling with armament, rockets, aircraft, guns, or with potentially massive firepower. What could have caused this massive build-up? In the, in the map on the right, see the thin sliver of the state of Israel. Here is Bible prophecy that few have considered. And of Asher he said, Asher is the most blessed of our sons. Let him be favoured by his brothers, and let him dip his feet in oil. That's a very, very significant prophecy. Now if you look on the map there, you'll see yellow, and that was the ancient area for Asher. That was a tribe of Israel. And Now this is the area where 250 billion barrels of shale oil or as the Bible calls it, flint oil, has been found. Fifty miles off the curse opposite the city of Haifa in the Med is an unbelievable three trillion cubic feet of gas. Could this massive gas and oil wealth discovered by Israel be the hook in the jaws of the Russians that will eventually draw them and its allies, the throng of nations that Yahweh says he will draw them out, to battle with. Already the President of Russia, Mr. Putin, has visited Israel to demand a share of the oil only to be turned down. Iran prepares to enrich in uranium up to 60%. But do we know well, how far they're going? And you know, do you need to enrich uranium? Because it's a well known fact that you can take some fuel rods out of a reactor and really just about destroy New York. So <laughs> we're all focused on getting it up higher, but you know, <laughs> all you need is a dirty bomb to do the job. Though you, though you wouldn't know it from our entertainment press and media, which is true, who seem to be only interested in reporting the latest gossip or celebrity details, yet the Near East is potentially facing a war situation. It may not happen right now, however, as the Bible says, Russia will be turned around or brought back. It could be a request from the to come ba back up and help for the destruction of Israel at some future stage. Huge military presence. Regardless of United Nations sanctions and a huge American presence that by now includes two or three carrier groups, which alone have about 30 or 40 ships each, submarines together with hundreds of aircraft, rockets, all patrolling to keep the Straits of Hummus open, will they stop an attack on Saudi Arabia's oil facilities and to get rid of any mines placed by Iran? One has to wonder. Naval traffic jam. Another feature of this build-up is to be seen in the Eastern Mediterranean. Once again, there's a traffic jam of military equipment consisting of naval ships from Russia, China, Iran, Turkey, Germany, France, Israel, Greece and America. And probably there's a few others, which also has a carrier fleet there. U.S. has 100,000 troops in the area. On top of this, the America, America has now over 100,000 troops in two islands 
um, including a huge arsenal of weapons and ordnance. There is a huge military build-up. How can the West afford all this? Every penny America spends is borrowed, as is the case with Britain. Financial collapse after defeating Iran. The prophecy shows that the big horn on the ram, sorry, on the he goat, breaking off and all the power is gone. Daniel 8, therefore the goat waxed very great, and when he was strong, the great horn was broken. For it came up four notable ones towards the four winds of heaven. It is, noti it is worth noting that we now have the quartet, led by Tony Blair. And the quartet consists of Europe, Russia, uh, America and China. So here are the four winds of heaven back in place, because straight after the death of Alexander the Great, his four generals took over. So we have a similar situation. You see, Bible prophecy, you've got a type and an anti-type. And so what happens before happens again. It is, it, it is like a <laughs> it's almost like a trial run. So here we have now an, uh, uh, the, the type again that is happening, that could happen when the collapse of the West, which the West is really the m active members of the West are Britain and America, and that is what <coughs> prophes uh, prophecy uh, says. And those are Ephraim and Manessa. The horn represents all forms of power, including financial power and military power. It is generally admitted that the West is some very disturbing facts. I am merely the reporter of these things. I have no wish for these things to happen. Neither do I gloat as I live, like many who read this in the West. For decades our power as nations has been dispersed, both in Britain and America. 51% of British companies have been sold off, including car and steel. Have we gone mad? The power of the holy people is scattered. In Daniel 12.7 And I heard the man clothed in linen, which was upon the water of the river, when he held up his right hand and his left hand unto heaven, and swear by him that liveth forever, that it shall be for times, times, and half a time, when he shall have accomplished to scatter the power of the holy people, all these things shall be finished. The power has been scattered. We don't make ships anymore. We don't make planes anymore. We don't make cars anymore in this country, except they're all made for foreign names. We don't make trucks anymore. I don't know what we make to justify this huge expenditure we do have. To have it scattered, you had to have it first. Isn't that true? So, to have the power scattered, you have to have it in the first place. What has been scattered? What saved us during many wars? The ability to largely feed ourselves, to have a robust economy that produced everything from pins to battleships, cars to clothes, steel to plastics, food, etc. We were a wonderfully um, um, designed nation. We had everything. We were very diversified. Britain no longer is wonderfully diverse. We no longer have all these factories, and our leaders purposely allowed union chaos then for them to be placed all over the planet. Taxes of 95% were levied on entrepreneurs, so they fled. They said, we're leaving the shores. So where's all the ships being built today? Well, South Korea. I mean, there's huge shipyards there. Uh, we build nothing. Do you know, in the last decade before the, the crash, you know, anybody who had a slipway could have built a ship because there was such a shortage. We had sophisticated slipways with cranes, etc. We were demolishing them while everybody else was wanting ships. So what does Britain produce today? No longer is it the wonderfully diverse economies I've said, bequeathed to us by our forefathers. The North has been turned into a jobs black spot. So our skills up there have been lost. How disgusting. But you see, we will not obey. And, you know, when I write these things like this, I get some really, really <laughs> bad replies. People are really guttural. They're really beast-like in the way they reply. And you can look at anybody who does this or put any comment down, and you want to see the sort of beastly sort of reply you get. It's, And we're just trying to warn you. And America as well. As happened in Britain, we see the same things happening in America. Their car industry is in a bad way. Many models having disappeared. 
TV sets, electrical goods, spares have been stripped. Both Britain and America of their wealth previously we produced the, these things but now we send all our foreign exchange overseas to China or wherever it was uh, Taiwan or Japan to buy these ships or to buy the uh, radios or TVs or whatever you wanted cars etc and you know when I used to watch in America these huge container ships roll into America and all these cars come off I thought well you know there's only so many sales so what are you going to do you're going to lose your car industry well of course that was right I mean, it doesn't take much intelligence, does it? You know, if you've got a mil you've got ten million, ten million sales, and three million, then five million are taken, that your local car industry is going to suffer. I mean, the, you know, that that is not uh, brilliant. That's just <laughs> the fact. So, what have we sold sell to the world? Very little we've got today. Our power is scattered. Both these nations have been r running with def deficits for decades because of this traitorous policy. They allowed Rover to go to China, along with its great names, MG and Rover and Morris Austin, all our, fo our forefathers built up for, over for, for a pound. Then the asset strippers, too, uh, took the multi-million pension fund, and uh, that was theirs as well. It is disgusting what has actually happened. How wealth given away. While also all this was going on, we witnessed the Right Honourable Gordon Brown, XPM, sell our gold reserves against advice at two forty five dollars an ounce when it reached over eighteen hundred and could go far higher. Why did he do this in the middle of a of a boom? Our Navy, Army and Air Force decimated. The corrupt EUs who books whose books have not been signed off by their own auditors, sucks more, far more than 200 billion out of Britain annually. To give you some perspective on the size of this sum, we only spend 32 billion on defence. There's lots more. I'll cover more in future videos, but out of all this, the main thing that has happened, the source of our power has been cut off. Our generals and admirals in the past and still today know and knew where to go when they were in trouble on the battlefields. Bismarck, that's the battleship, delivered to the hands of the British fleet. Few know this. But you know, Bismarck was far ahead of the lumbering British fleet who'd gone the wrong direction in the first instance, although they had the right information to go the right direction, but they were heading they were heading uh, they were heading uh, west when they should have been heading east. Um, and yet they had, if they'd done the right calculations they would have known where the Bismarck was. And then finally, uh, some um, swordfish aircraft, uh, you know, uh, canvas and string affairs, uh, managed to drop a torpedo that jammed the rudders of the Bismarck, and she swung around into the wind, and that's the only direction she would sail. And the captain and the admiral on board knew they were in trouble, and uh, they issued drink to all the men. But remember. Bismarck was still a formidable ship. She just only had damage done to her, her rudders. They hadn't done anything damage to her very accurate firing mechanisms. Now, what, did, what happened? Admiral Turvey prayed Nelson's prayer before confronting the Bismarck, and not one of our ships was hit by shells. Remember, it was only the Bismarck's rudders that were hit, not its firing mechanisms, nor its guns, so it was in complete um, good form to actually take out. I mean, it took the... Ro it, 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 it took out one of our biggest battleships about a couple of days before, um, so it was n it, it was not incapacitated except for its directional control. Bismarck went down, and not one ship was hit by its accurate firing system. Further, Bismarck's rudders were damaged by the swordfish aircraft, so they could only sail into the wind towards the British fleet. It was delivered into the hands of the British fleet. Battle miracles continued. General Patton prayed for the weather change at the Battle of the Bulge so that the fighters and bombers could take off when he realised he was in all sorts of trouble uh, because he had undertaken to get there to try and save a, a situation because if we'd lost that, we could have been pushed back into the sea by the Germans and they knew that, he knew that, he's a very good general. The misty weather down to the ground level was locked in for a week. Hence, he needed those planes and he said the only way to get it was to prayer. After the prayer, the very next day dawned sunny and cloudless. The, the fighters and bombers took off and the Germans were stopped and their tanks destroyed and everything else was destroyed. 
and that is how we won that a prayer to change the weather he always says he controls the vent naturally through the weather look at how Yahweh interfered with the weather there are many such instances Dunkirk, the torch landing, Sicily, Waterloo, Trafalgar the Spanish Armada uh, where a medal was, medal was struck by Elizabeth I with the caption saying Yahweh he blew and they were scattered Falklands, Midway where the weather turned potential defeat into victory for men um, tempt the future of this nation by saying there's no heavenly father and we you know it's all done by our own um, expertise you know if you look back through history you look back through the battles you will see for instance that it was the weather that sunk uh, Napoleon so that night before the battle at Waterloo all those fields turned into a quagmire and you know he nearly fell up face down in the mud it was that bad and um, he had a strategy where he took the cannons and fired them at, for instance, a British square. And the, bu the, the uh, cannonball would bounce across the ground and then take everybody out in that line in the square. It was a good theory. Except on that day, that particular battlefield turned into a quagmire. And so when he fired these cannonballs, they just disappeared into the mud and never, were never to be seen again. So. Uh, Many believe, rather believe in myths and frauds. They'd rather believe in myths such as evolution, where Haeckel's fraud, that was known to be a fraud, way back in 1865 when two eminent doctors of embryology and medicine proved it was a fraud. This fraud was in my textbooks when I was in school and university textbooks, and still in school textbooks. This is how powerful this lobby is. They've got tons of money and they just keep on going. No matter what is proven, they just keep on going, pushing this fraud. The constant disappearing proofs of the missing link. Piltdown Man was proven to be another fraud, including six others like him. A tooth was also supposed to prove the missing link. Well, that was until some very clever doctor of veterinary science said, but that is the tooth of a pig in South America. It also disappeared in the dungeons of the Museum of Natural History with fa fabrication systems, the seal account, and many more. But you see, the, st the churches are spiritually dead. We have turned our backs on Yahweh, and as a consequence, we have no idea why we are in such trouble. The churches are solid, yet they have the answer, as we all do. Those of us who have quietly studied these things for over 50 years and belong to no church feel it's time to speak out. We win but lose everything. The armies, as prophesied, are forming, forming and taking their positions. The main guarantors of peace are weakened as their power is scattered by enemies. And our people are about to enter a way we can't afford having to buy everything from outside sources when we are literally bankrupt. We will win the coming war against Iran but lose our power. That horn will break off. That is our, not only our military power, but also our financial power. Financial power and military power go hand in hand. And it will prevent us from <laughs> continuing. And uh, we may even lose our independence and be occupied. Return to Yahweh to only be then that those left of our people after the coming nuclear exchanges will return to Yahweh. See Yahweh News. Thank you very much for listening.